Dear friends, uh, very good morning to all of you. Uh, welcome back. Uh, today I am going to talk about another important concept called uh, energy storage devices. So, it is a continuation of electrochemistry. Uh, before going to touch the topic, I would like to recall the terminologies which get involved in the electrochemistry concepts. So, first of all, I just want to discuss about the basic uh, terminology which get involved in the elect electrical uh, st ele electric energy storage devices also. And the first one is going to be electrodes. So, what is electrode and what are its functions? Similarly, what is cell and what are its function and what is maybe battery, how it can be classified based on the type of chemical reactions which are taking place inside the uh, uh, concerned uh, devices. So, electrode is nothing but it is a kind of uh, single compartment where it may undergo either oxidation or reductions. So, if you look at the uh, position of metal in the electrochemical series, so basically electrochemical series is nothing but it is a kind of sequence where uh, metals and the alloys are arranged in the increasing order of standard reduction potential values. And accordingly, if the metals are placed above hydrogen, where hydrogen uh, gets uh, zero electro potential, if the metals are placed above hydrogen, they will have, uh, they all those metal will have oxidation tendency. And if the metals are placed below hydrogen, uh, all those metal will have uh, reduction tendency. And uh, if uh, if you want to construct an electrochemical cell, we have to choose the kind of electrode, appropriate electrode from the electrochemical cells. So then only we can able to get the maximum output from the concerned cells. And uh, accordingly, electrochemistry, ele I mean, electrode is nothing but it's a kind of single compartment, single compartment. Uh, so where uh, in this single compartment, the metal will be placed in the corresponding own salt solution or some other electrolyte. So that uh, single compartment is called as either electrode or an half cell. And the second is going to be cell. So cell is nothing but it's a combination of two electrodes. It will have both positive and negative compartment. So the combination of two of cell is called as cell. And now what is my battery? So battery is nothing but it's a kind of electrochemical device which uh, involved uh, which we carried out the it, it, or it used to carry out electrochemical reactions as well electrolytic reactions. So during the reactions, some type of uh, cell can able to convert uh, chemical energy into electrical energy and some type of cell can able to recollect the reverse reaction also. So accordingly they are called as uh, primary and secondary cells. So therefore battery is nothing but it is a combination of cells. More than two cells are connected together in either in the serious manner or parallel manner will bring you, will bring you the battery compartment. So, based on the type of chemical reactions uh, which are taking place inside of those uh, battery devices, we can classify the battery in the following category and the first one is going to be primary battery. So, what is my primary battery and the second one is going to be secondary battery or we can call it as secondary storage devices. secondary and the last one is going to be a kind of uh, cell is called uh, fuel cell. I will talk about fuel cell later and today I am going to focus about uh, both primary and secondary battery. Now what is my primary battery? So primary battery or primary cell is nothing but it is a kind of uh, device in which only the forward reaction is possible. Now what is my forward reaction? So or what are the uh, chemical reactions which are responsible for the production of EMF? So before going to study about the basic functions which get involved in the electrochemical devices, storage devices, you are supposed to be aware of the concept called redox reaction. So what is my redox reactions? So redox reaction is nothing but it is a kind of chemical reaction in which both oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously. Oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously. Now what is the oxidation? So oxidation is nothing but it is a kind of chemical reaction in which the metal will be converted into metal ions. So basically when you take any metal, the metal consists of the corresponding metal ions and all these ions are bonded together with the help of valence electron. So during this oxidation process, the valence electrons will be removed from the particular metal. So if you take zinc as a representative example, uh, the valency of uh, zinc is going to be 2. So, therefore, the valence electron will be removed from the outermost orbital. So, therefore, now we are during the oxidation process, we are going to convert the zinc metal into zinc ion, is in 2 plus, and also it releases to number of electrons. This process is called as uh, oxidation. Now, what is in the reduction? Let us consider one simple example Cu2 plus. Now the Cu2 plus will try to consume the electrons from the electron uh, supplier. 
now the two electrons will satisfy or nullify the positive charge which are placed on the copper metal now it get reduced and becomes cu so it will be deposited the so copper get reduced and it will be precipitated now you can ask me sir why uh, zinc get oxidized and copper get uh, reduced because when you look at the position of a zinc in the electrochemical series it occupied above the hydrogen and the copper plays below the hydrogen so the tendency of uh, zinc is always going to be oxidation tendency and the tendency of copper is always going to be a reduction tendency so therefore zinc always undergo oxidation process and copper undergo always reduction, uh, reduction process and the combination of those, uh, these two reactions are called as redox reaction so redox is nothing but both oxidation and reduction occur simultaneously in the particular electrochemical system that is called redox reaction. So, this kind of redox reaction is, is highly responsible for the production of EMF in both primary and secondary cell. So, in both in primary and secondary cell the redox reaction is responsible for the production of EMF. So, which uh, produce EMF this is one reason and the second one reason is one is uh, due to the redox reaction and the second one is going to be due to the decrease in the free energy of the system. So, basically whenever any type of chemical reactions which is taking place inside of the cell compartment there will be change in the thermodynamic parameters such as uh, uh, Gibbs free energy and uh, enthalpy and entropy of the system. So, basically when you look at the electrochemical system the Gibbs uh, change in the Gibbs free energy. So, it can it will be represented by delta G and uh, what type of uh, rea what type of uh, change will take place. So, so de delta is always indicate small change and uh, the negative sign indicates that is a decrease in the free energy of the system. So, which leading to the production of EMF in the particular system. So, therefore, minus delta G is equal to N F E. So, this is nothing but EMF production. So, where n is nothing but uh, number of electron transport, number of electron transport uh, during the redox reaction and uh, f is nothing but Faraday. So, 1 Faraday is equal to 96500 coulomb and e is nothing but energy, electrical potential. So, therefore, there is a decrease in the free energy of the system and any chemical reaction is taking place that leading to the production of EMF in the particular system. So, therefore, these two are the reasons uh, responsible for the production of EMF in the electrochemical and electrolytic cell. Well, now what are the classification of cell first of all? So, basically uh, cell will be classified into two major class based on the type of chemical reactions or based on the cell reversibility. Accordingly, they are called as reversible and irreversible cell. Reversible and irreversible cell reversible cell. And now, what is a reversible cell? The irreversible cell is the device in which both the forward as well as uh, reversible reaction is possible. That means, it will try to undergo both the uh, redox reaction and again if you supply energy from the external source, again the cell reaction will be reversed. The best example for this kind of cell is going to be uh, lithium battery. That is the kind of device what we are using for our uh, mobile phones and uh, laptops and all. And irreversible cell here only the forward reaction is possible which means only the redox reaction will help us to produce electricity and it is very difficult even it is impossible to reverse the uh, elect uh, electrochemical reactions. If you try to reverse the uh, cell reactions the cell may collapse. So, the best example for such kind of cell is going to be a uh, dry cell right. Now, now I will give an example for this dry cell. So, this is going to be a dry cell. So, what we are using in our uh, electronic gadgets. So, this is a dry cell. In the, in the upcoming classes, I will be talking about the functions and construction of this dry cell. And again, uh, based on the type of electrochemical reaction which are taking place in the inside of the cell compartment, the cell is furtherly divided into the following two category that is called electrochemical cell. Electrochemical cell. Electrochemical and another one class will be electrolytic cell. Electrolytic cell. Now, what is meant by electrochemical cell? So, basically electrochemical cell is, a nothing, is nothing but it is a device in which uh, chemical energy. So, C stands for chemical energy. So, the chemical energy is converted into electrical energy. E stands for electrical energy. And electrolytic cell is nothing but it is a kind of device, electrochemical device in which uh, electrical energy is converted into chemical energy. The reverse of the phenomena. So, electrical energy, so we supposed to spend some amount of electrical energy to bring back the kind of chemical reactions. 
So the best example is going to be uh, electrolysis. Electrolysis and this is going to be uh, secondary batteries. Alright, so this is the basic function begin the operation of all the type of uh, battery and cell devices. Now, I am going to uh, focus about uh, classification of battery. So, battery is the device, it can able to perform both the type of uh, electrochemical reaction in a single cell itself. Say for example, uh, if you say electrochemical cell, it is can able to perform only forward reaction. If you say electrolytic cell, it can able to perform only the conversion of electrical energy into chemical energy. But here, battery is the kind of device in which we are going to get the energy from the source as well we are going to supply some energy to bring back the chemical reactions. So, such type of cells are called as secondary battery. So, based on the cell operations and the energy output, we are going to classify these kind of battery into the following two category. One is called, as we classified earlier, one is called primary uh, battery and the second one is going to be a secondary battery. Second class of this uh, energy storage device is going to be a secondary battery. Now, what are primary batteries? So, the primary battery is the device in which only the forward reaction is possible. As I told you earlier, the dry cell is the best example in which only the forward reactions so which means uh, chemical energy is converted into electrical energy the, the, this reaction only possible in this uh, kind of uh, second uh, primary storage devices because it is very difficult or uh, it is impossible to reverse the cell reactions if you try to uh, reverse the cell reaction the cell uh, may collapse and sometimes leading to the explosion also. So, therefore, we are not supposed to recharge such kind of uh, irreversible cells. Even now, uh, you might see this uh, information on the cell body itself uh, where you could see the some statement, uh, do not do not reach it, uh, recharge. So, likewise, the statement will be given on it. And this cell can able to produce 1.5 out, uh, volt output and secondary battery. So, secondary battery is the device in which both uh, forward reaction as well as reversible reactions are possible. So, therefore, the cell or the battery can able to perform both reversible and irreversible batteries. <coughs> the secondary battery or the uh, battery which can able to perform both uh, forward and reversible reaction. Forward and reversible reactions are possible in the second all the secondary storage battery devices. Now, first of all, I am going to talk about the primary battery, about the construction, working, construction, working and advantages of uh, primary battery, let us take uh, dry cells. So, dry cell is the best example for uh, primary batteries. Now, I am going to talk about construction of dry cell, how the dry cell is being constructed. So, basically if you want to construct a kind of primary cell or dry cell, we are in need of the following material. Uh, one is uh, zinc container, so it will act as an anode and the second one graphite material, graphite rod, it will act as cathode and manganese oxide, MnO2. And Magnus oxide, it will act as uh, magnus oxide plus uh, graphite, considerable amount of uh, graphite powder. So, these two will act as uh, electrolyte. Okay, how the cells are, con how the cell is being constructed? So, if we want to construct a uh, uh, dry cell, we have to take the graphite rod. So, it consists of carbon alone. It is a kind of uh, inert material, but it will have high electrical connectivity and uh, the electrode has to be surrounded by the electrolytic material. So, paste of uh, manganese oxide MnO2 and uh, power carbon powder that is called the graphite material. Okay, So, the electrode must be surrounded by uh, both uh, this is MnO2 plus uh, C stands for carbon, carbon powder, graphite powder. Okay. And subsequently, this one has to be surrounded by, this one must be surrounded by a composition of, position of uh, zinc chloride, zinc chloride 
एंड जिंक एंड अमोनियम क्लोर इज एंड सी एल टू प्लस एन एच फोर सी एल so if you want to have if you want to construct this one you have to go for uh, zinc you have to use zinc chloride plus ammonium chloride additional electrolyte electrolytes also and followed by the entire setup has to be placed on place or should be covered or should be sealed with the help of uh, polypropylene cover so we have to provide polypropylene cover to avoid uh, leakage leakage of uh, electrolyte composition and the entire setup has to be placed on the zinc container so this is going to be a zinc container now this is going to be zinc container and uh, over which you have to place the metal cap and this metal cap is sealed with this uh, zinc containers so therefore uh, we could able to seal the leakage of electrolytes there is no possibility of electrolyte leakage and this is the construction of uh, this is what we have to construct the electro Uh, cell and this is a zinc container so this is what uh, this cell uh, has been constructed this is zinc container this is the metal cap and it is connected to this uh, zinc met, uh, zinc container and this is the negative compartment where uh, the cathode has been connected with this one and inside of this uh, container uh, we have uh, these composition like uh, magnesium oxide carbon powder a zinc chloride and ammonium chloride now this all will act as an electrolyte and this is a, this is a anode area and this is going to be a cathode area so now you just imagine now this cell has been connected to the external load now this is connected to the external load let's say one bulb okay it has been connected to the external load now electrochemical reaction will start uh take place inside of the cell compartment so at anode at anode oxidation now oxidation of uh, metal will takes place now zinc will act as anode now zinc will undergo oxidation process so zinc will be converted to zn2 plus plus and it release two number of electrons now what is by oxidation as I, i told you earlier oxidation is nothing but removal of electron the zinc container it consists of zinc atom and the zinc atoms are held together with the help of valence ion now we are going to valence electrons now we are going to replace these valence electron and uh, this electron will be liberated okay this is called oxidation oxidation at cathode reduction will takes place here uh, normally uh, in other comp other uh, type of cells uh, electrode itself will undergo oxidation process but in this case we have utilized carbon rod or graphite rod as a cathode material so it is inert material it do not undergo any type of chemical reactions as a result the electrolyte will try to undergo a uh, reduction reaction now magnesium oxide mno2 will undergo reduction process plus two electrons so the electron which is liberated inside uh, from the anodic area it's get consumed in the cathode compartment now when you look at the oxidation state of this magnesium oxide how the oxidation state of the metals can be calculated mno2 so the whole charge of this compound is going to be a zero zero now now you have to look at the oxidation number of this uh, oxygen atom so it can be easily found it can be easily calculated so if, if you want to know the oxidation number of oxygen you can take the simple molecule so h2o where hydrogen carry always carry positive one so it has two hydrogen so it will carry two positive so if it is two positive if it is two positive it must be two minus because the entire uh, charge of this compound is going to be zero so therefore one oxygen carry two oxygen two negative charge so we have uh, two oxygen um, atom over here so it it must be four minus so if it is 4 minus it must be 4 plus because the entire charge is going to be 0 1 so therefore the oxidation number or state of the magnesium is going to be plus 4 in this uh, mno2 now this mn plus 4 mno2 will be converted into mn mn4 plus will be converted to mn3 plus so therefore during the reduction reaction the magnesium oxide get reduced and it forms magnesium oxyoxide mno oh which is nothing but magnesium oxyoxide here the oxidation number of this magnesium is going to be plus 3 so plus 4 oxidation state of magnesium has been reduced to plus 3 so we are added two uh, ele uh, electrons to uh, 
convert the 4 plus Magnus into 3 plus Magnus. So, such reaction is called as reduction reaction. And the combination of both the reactions is called as redox reaction. So, it can be represented like Zn plus 2MnO2 plus H2O gives Zn2 plus plus 2MnO OH angles oxy hydroxide. So, this is called redox reaction. So, this redox reaction is responsible for the production of EMF. So, due to this redox reaction, it will release considerable amount of electricity. So, if you take uh, such kind of uh, uh, cells, dry cells, it can able to produce 1.5 volt output. So, this is all about the construction and working of uh, dry cell. So, I just conclude uh, the dry cell can be constructed easily with the help of the following material like, like a zinc container, graphite as anode, uh, cathode and manganese dioxide and uh, graphite powder as electrolyte and the additional electrolyte is going to be a zinc chloride and ammonium chloride and uh, all these uh, material has to be arranged like, as, uh, like this as we discussed earlier. And once the cell is connected to the external load, maybe a, uh, a bad, maybe a torch light or other electronic gadgets, the kind of electrochemical reactions start occur in the uh, respective electrodes. Now, at anode, oxidation will take place. Now, zinc will get oxidized into zinc ion. And similarly, manganese dioxide will get reduced and it forms manganese oxide hydroxide. And the combination of these two reactions is called as redox reactions which is responsible for the production of EMF and if you take dry cells, it can able to produce one maximum of, to the maximum end of uh, 1.5 volt output. Now, what are the advantages? So, when you look at the advantages of dry, dry cell, it is a very uh, light, lightweight material and it can be transport, it is highly uh, useful for many electronic gadgets and uh, transport is also very easy and when you look at the demerits of this cell, uh, it cannot be a rechargeable it's a kind of uh, it's not a rechargeable battery it is a kind of uh, irreversible cell so therefore uh, we cannot use this battery again and again so if we want to uh, if you want to get uh, continuous power from the battery so we have to replace we have to replace this uh, old battery by uh, one another uh, new battery so that's all about the construction working advantage and the disadvantage of uh, dry cells thank you very, thank you very much for your personal listening in the next class i will uh, come up with the, some other uh, but type of batteries. Thank you all.